a strange inherent trust among air travelers. Watch my luggage while I use the restroom, please. People talk and share. I shared a sandwich with a young fellow from Brazil. The sandwich and my second glass of wine were free from a flight attendant I befriended. Folks on airplanes, I think, are all nervous and subconsciously come into grips with mortality. You want a friend nearby if you're about to plummet to your death, yes? <laughs> if you fly alone, and it's come to my attention most folks do, it seems only natural to bond with those around you, because an airplane is a small, air-bound, and extremely brief society. Neighbors build relations, swap stories, and sometimes goods. Don't forget the sandwich. And then, when you land, the society of Flight 742 becomes extinct. There are times when the longevity of the society is extended. Diverted flights and delays, a unity of misery. That may be the strongest bond of humanity, human suffering. Folks sleep unprotected near one another and have nothing better to do than to share and bond more. If the world was an airplane, everyone would get along a whole lot better, I think. But, of course, the world is not an airplane, and Pine Springs is no exception. Actually, that bit about human suffering being the strongest bond of humanity is true everywhere. There's a particular darkness in Pine Springs I wasn't aware of until I finally found Ralph McCann, or should I say, when he found me. These people are the enemy, whether you choose to believe it or not. And unless the government starts investing money into programs that will stop them, this country as we know it is doomed. Don't believe me? Just read the paper. It's not just a movement, it's a... You better hope the government invests in someone to stop me from hitting you upside the head. Neil, why must you always watch that awful man? Because, Virginia, I find his antics entertaining. I think it's terrifying that people listen to a man like that. Well, sure, he's terrifying. Doesn't make it any less entertaining, though. The man always looks like he's about to have an aneurysm or some such. Honestly, Neil, you're awful sometimes. <laughs> then it seems to me, Mrs. Price, that there is something wrong with you, as you voluntarily tied the knot with me. Hmm. True words were never spoken. I must be out of my mind because I still love you to pieces. I never doubted it for a minute. What in creation was that? I don't know. Ginny, stay here. I'll go see what that noise was. Neil, someone's coming up the stairs. Yeah, I hear it. Ginny, go into the bathroom and lock the door. But what about... Damn it, Ginny, just do it. I'll take care of what it. What if he has a gun? Get in the bathroom, Ginny. Oh, heaven help us. Now, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Now, we have nothing of value here. Now, I haven't seen your face yet, so you still have plenty of time to turn around and leave without getting into a whole mess of trouble for some old TV and some cheap jewelry. I'm not here to rob you, Mr. Price. Ralph McCann? I heard you were looking for me. You're damn right I was looking for you. Get into this room right now, boy, and tell me where in the world you've been hiding yourself. Here and there. I didn't want to stay anywhere too long in case the cops were looking for me. The only reason I came back was because I heard Evan was in trouble. For Pete's sake, Ralph, you could have come to my office, or at least come to the house during the day and ring the doorbell. And risk being seen? Running only makes you look guilty. If you just tell the police what happened... What good would that do? Evan and I did nothing wrong, but no one believes it. I do. You do? Uh-huh. Evan gave the police a full statement, and, well, they might not buy it, but I do. No offense, but that really doesn't make me feel better. One old hick isn't going to help me and Evan out of jail. Excuse me, boy, but this old hick is the only person in the world who's busting his behind to make sure justice is served here. So I would appreciate it if you just showed me a little respect. You're right. Sorry. I'm just kind of screwed up by this whole experience, you know. Of course you are. If you weren't, I'd think there was something wrong with you. Oh, yes, Ginny. Sorry, I forgot you were in there. Forgot about me? Hmm. 
A minute ago, you were all lovey-dovey, and now you forget about me. Hello, Mrs. Price. Sorry to scare you like this. Don't you hello me. Are you out of your mind? Running from the police? Breaking in in the dead of night and scaring us into next week? Ralph McCann, you have some nerve. But I... But are for sitting on, young man. You should be ashamed of yourself. Leaving poor Evan to rot in jail like that. Can't you call yourself his friend? I have half a mind Ginny, to... Ginny, please relax. Now, I'm sure Ralph knows he's acting like a fool without you yelling in his ears like that. Don't you, Ralph? Uh, yeah. Of course I do. See? Now, Dumplin', why don't you go make a, a big old pitcher of lemonade for us while Ralph and I sort this out? Mrs. Price makes a damn fine pitcher of lemonade. Fine. Not that he deserves any of my famous lemonade for acting the way he's been acting. But you're right, sweetie. I should let you guys talk shop so you can help poor Evan. I married the best. Yes, yes you did. Don't think I'm done yelling at you, though, Ralph. We're going to have a long talk later. Yes, ma'am. So, are you going to tell me what you came here to tell me, or do I have to use my ESP? Damn, you've got spunk for someone who lived in this one-horse town his whole life. Well, no one's ever accused me of being demure. I'll bet not. Sure. I'll tell you who killed Sarah. And I bet he killed the other two also. Who was it? Arthur Webb, the guy who owns the Lumberjack Motel. Arthur? What makes you say that? Do you have any proof? He told me so. I'd say that counts as proof. Ralph! You better tell me the story from the beginning. The beginning? I guess that'd be a couple of months after Sarah got killed. Evan and I both suspected Mr. Webb, but we had nothing but our guts to go on. So we did some digging. It's gotta be Webb, Ralph. No one else had a key to the hotel room except us and him. Yeah, except Sheriff Barker thinks it's one of us. So it doesn't really matter that Webb had one too. Why would either of us do it? I don't know. I think he just hates us. So we're screwed then, basically. Unless we got something more than the key to go on, yeah. Okay, so we follow him. Who, Webb? Yeah, we stake him out. Go through his shit. Find something that'll incriminate him. Are we gonna start calling your car the mystery machine? You're such an ass, Ralph. If we don't do this, you and I are gonna end up in jail. And I am not letting Webb get away with killing Sarah. So what are you suggesting? We, like, stalk the dude till he slips up? Exactly. Alright. So let's go to the motel then, I guess. Right on. Wait, we should split up. You stick to Webb like glue and find out what you can. While I go ask about him around town. Someone's gotta know something. How many secrets can there be in a small town like this? I don't know if this is such a good idea, Evan. How am I supposed to keep an eye on him without him catching me? Figure it out, Ralph. It's our only chance to get him back for killing Sarah and driving Cass crazy. Okay, okay, chill out, dude. I'll hide in the bushes or something. I really hope you're kidding. You got a better idea? Just take the car. I'll hoof it. Hoof it to where? I'm gonna go talk to Mayor Prescott. He and Webb are friends, I think. He may know something that could point us in the right direction. Now just drive to the Lumberjack Motel? Yes, Ralph. Keep an eye on Webb. But don't let him see you. Relax, bro. I got this. God help us. Oh, come on. Have a little faith. Fine. I'm sure you'll do great, Ralph. Thanks. What is it I'm supposed to do again? It's very funny. Just go, will you? All right, all right. Good luck, dude. Let me see if I got this right. You two numbskulls decided to take it upon yourselves to investigate the crime by stalking Arthur Webb. Brilliant. Don't scoff. We actually dug up some crazy stuff about him. Did you know about the secret club he was in? I've heard rumors about some secret fraternity or something in town, but it's all pretty hush-hush. Supposedly, they don't tell you anything about it unless you're a member. Exactly. Well, when we figured out that Mr. Webb is a member... We managed to get me an invitation to join as an initiate. We figured maybe he'd let his guard down there, get drunk, and let something slip. But we found something out that we definitely didn't expect. What's with the robes? And the guys in creepy masks. Are they gonna, like, haze us before the gag party? Shut up. The elder's about to speak. Brothers, I hereby begin this season's meeting of the Brotherhood of Malevolence. Initiates, stand for the recital of the Oath of the Dread Fathers. 
Brother Alpha, as the second to the Elder, the duty falls to you to lead the initiates in the oath. Are you prepared for this task? Elder Aether, I cannot lead the initiates as you have requested. I find them to be an undesirable addition to this ancient brotherhood. I demand they all be immediately dismissed. Brother Alpha, you disrespect this brotherhood with your words. And you have failed to wear your shrouds or disguise your voice as is traditional for initiation ceremonies. The initiates have not earned the right to hear our true voices. Anonymity is our ally, brother. Oh, give me the best arrow. Do not use real names here, brother. Why not? We all know each other here. That is not quite accurate. You should not speak so freely, brother. It makes you sound foolish. Oh, of course. <laughs> My mistake. We all know each other here except for the right honorable brother, Moo. How could I forget your insistence on wearing your shrouds and using that ridiculous voice filter at every meeting? Permanent anonymity is your brother's prerogative. Why does he wish to remain anonymous? Hmm? Are we not a brotherhood of proud killers? Should we not take great pleasures in sharing our conquests in the Hall of Death? Perhaps. But pride does not always mean you need to run your mouth off. I think Brother Moo is ashamed that he only has three victims to claim as his own. He's undoubtedly jealous of the five trophies I wear around my neck. These five dried ears that have earned me the title of second to the elder. I must remind you, brother, that though your rise in the ranks of the Brotherhood has been both impressive and rapid, you are still my second until the time you claim your sixth victim. Funny you should mention that, Elder. Ha! Don't tell us you've claimed another one. I have indeed, Brother Moon. Not just me. My latest victim is the very picture of purity local girl, an icon in the community. You claim to be responsible for the murder of Reverend Winter's daughter, Sarah? I am responsible for the murder of Reverend Winter's daughter, Sarah. I thought he arrived in my private room drying with his feet. So you don't have it yet. I have here. I sliced it right off her pretty little head myself, earrings and all. It just hasn't got it. If what you say is true, Brother Alpha, then you have a claim to the seat of Elder. As such, if you wish to wash out this batch of initiates, it may very well be your right. I object to this, Elder. Brother Alpha has not yet presented his sixth ear, and therefore has no claim to the seat of Elder yet. Only the Elder can wash out a batch of initiates. Elder, Brother Moo speaks out of turn. As we know, he only has three ears. He's a full two degrees below me and shouldn't even be allowed to speak to me unless I address him first. Brother Alpha is correct, Brother Moo. You are out of line. The decision whether to accept or reject the initiates is too important to be made when the eldership is in flux like this. Therefore, it shall be stayed until the next quarter's meeting, when Brother Alpha's impressive trophy should be ready for presentation. And let it be known, my brothers, that I intend to do away with all this ceremony and anonymity foolishness and bring this fraternity into a new era when no one can hide their failures behind shrouds and voice filters. Isn't that right, Brother Moo? Your mouth is going to get you into trouble, Webb. Yes, I'm sure it will, brother. Elder, since we're holding off on the initiation, I think we brothers should celebrate my latest conquest, and I will share the story with you all. Very well. The initiates will leave, and we will celebrate Brother Alpha's victory. Here, here. No, I can't leave now. Uh, Brother Sigma, if you'd be so kind as to play the Brotherhood's favorite song. Gotta hear this story. Hey, what are you doing back there? S sorry, I'm... 
I'm going. And no more of this Brother Alpha business. It's mine now. Call me Arthur. Uh, Brother Moo, what shall I call you? I bet it's something embarrassing like you know, Melvin. I had to leave. The creeps were all over the place, making sure there were no initiates in the room. So I didn't get to hear what he said after that. But he said he did it. He even talked about cutting her ear off. Wasn't that part left out of the papers? How else would he have known? I don't rightly know. It certainly does raise some questions about Arthur. I always knew there was something wrong with that man. But I had no idea there was such darkness in our town. So will what I told you keep Evan out of prison? It might just do that. I will need you to testify on his behalf, of course. N no, I can't do that. I have to go back into hiding in case the police don't believe me. O or the Brotherhood finds me. I mean, there could be cops in the Brotherhood. I realize that, Ralph. But without you here to corroborate the story, it's just hearsay. No one will listen. You gotta make them listen, because I'm not sticking around. Ralph, I am not letting you leave this house. You need to stay in town and help Evan. You won't let me leave? How do you plan on keeping me here? Well, I can call the sheriff for a start. And don't let the snow on the roof fool you. I'll drop you on your head like a sack of potatoes before I let you leave this house. I told you what you need to know. That's all I'm willing to do. I'm leaving. I was hoping it wasn't going to come to this. But I've got to call the sheriff. Or you could just let us leave. Virginia! Sorry, Puddin'. He got the drop on me while I was making the lemonade. Get your gun away from my wife's head. Or I promise I will tear that mustache right off your face and choke you to death with it. I think you'd both end up dead before you took your first step. An eventuality I'd like to avoid. Your wife has very beautiful temples, and I'd hate to alter them. I'm sorry, Mr. Price, but I can't go to prison, and I certainly can't let the Brotherhood find me. Ralph McCann, you are a stupid, stupid boy, working with a man like that. Maybe, but I'm still leaving. Y'all wouldn't mind heading into the bathroom? Let's make this quick, folks. Ralph and I have places to be. All right, all right. You win. Just don't hurt my wife, and I'll do what you say. Smart man. Ralph, why don't you push that dresser in front of the door with those big, strong arms of yours? Think about what you're doing, Ralph. Think about who you've teamed yourself up with. A man like that. These are better allies to have around than you think. You're making me blush. Shall we away, Ralph? Yeah. Let's get out of here. Sorry about this, Mr. Price. I am too, Ralph. I'm sorry you made such a foolish decision. Ralph? Ralph? <sighs> they left. Neil, honey, you wouldn't judge me if I fainted right about now, would you? Not at all, sweetheart. You go right ahead, and I'll catch you. I promise. <laughs>